Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. College football season. <laughs> it's preview season. It's not quite here yet. Uh, we are into July, though, which means this is the last month in the calendar that you will have no football until March 2020. And even then, the XFL starts this year, right? I, I don't know when the XFL starts, but it's supposed to. I think, it's, I think it's next February, and I think it runs through April. So at that point, I mean, you're going to have football every month starting next month all the way through... Good gracious, February. May? No, May. Well, yeah, if you count the XFL. Yeah, if you count the yeah, XFL. It's if the XFL finishes an entire season. That's true. That is very, very true. All right, I'm Gary. I'm Chris. This is Winning Cures Everything. This is our college football previews. We are rocking and rolling. We are on with the AAC West, the American Athletic Conference. The show is brought to you by betnow.eu. Use promo code WINNING50. You can actually see it right down there. If you're watching on, on your video screen, right down there. And if you're listening on the podcast, it's in the description. Go check it out. Betnow.eu, winning50, W-I-N-N-I-N-G-5-0 is the promo code. You get a 50% deposit bonus. It is awesome. It's fantastic. They've got a great layout, great site, great odds. It's super easy. They treat us well. They will treat you well. They make it easy. They make it simple. Go check them out. Betnow.eu. All right. Also, go check out winningcureseverything.com. Uh, winningcureseverything.com. Winningcureseverything.com. It's like subliminal, right? Keep it in there. Um, we got everything you need over there. The YouTube, the uh, podcast, uh, all the links, all the Facebook, whatever you need, it's going to be right there. So go check it out. Uh, Chris, let's fire away, man. What, tell me your thoughts right off the bat on the AAC West. Like, I know you love this conference. I love this conference. I don't – there was a day at a time where I, I, I still don't think that the West is as good as the East, top to bottom. You don't think the West is as good as the East? No. Really? I love two teams in the West. I love four teams in the East. Yeah, okay. I can, I could, I could maybe see that. I could maybe and see outside that. of the two teams that I love in the West, I don't really like anyone else. Okay, that this makes sense. This is where it gets a little weaker, top heavy. This is true. This so, is true. where are we starting? Starting with the Houston Cougars. Okay. All right. Uh, going alphabetical order in this. Okay. 2018 went eight and five, five and three in the conference. Returning starters, they got eight on offense, five on defense. As far as experience goes, number 20 nationally, number one in the, in conference. the conference. Oh, yeah. Uh, fired head coach Major, uh, Major Applewhite after a seven and five and eight and five season. This is the biggest which pickup is crazy, of right? the conference. This is the biggest recruit. There's no player, or coach, or anything else. That will matter more than this pickup right here. Dana Holgerson from West Virginia. Yeah, he's, they're paying him uh, a king's ransom to coach in Houston. Now, he was the offensive coordinator at Houston under, uh, uh, was it, um, what's the guy from Texas A&M? Uh, oh, someone. Jim, oh, someone. Someone. Jumbo, yeah. uh, someone was there, yeah. Yep. So oh. he, he's been in Houston before. He understands the, uh, the dynamics around that program. That's going to make, uh, I think, the transition a little bit easier how, Look, how many coaches have we seen leave a Power 5 job for a Group of 5 job? Without being fired? Without being pushed out. Not even like fired. Like, there's been coaches that were on a hot seat that were like, you know what, I'm just not dealing with this bull crap anymore. I'm just going to leave on my own terms, maybe leave a year early. This was not that. No. West Virginia was on their way. They're doing well. I mean, they won 10 games last year. Yeah. Like, they're, they're yeah. not – They're he had done – Really well. Now I think it, the I situation think this was a little well rocky. I think well for my group of six philosophy. I, the, my power, power five, my power six, right here. I, I agree with you, but I do think things were getting a little bit rocky. Mm, I don't know about in that. Morgantown. Uh, here's here's won the deal. ten games in West Virginia. Who the hell do they think they are? Wait, I'm with you. I'm just telling you that they, they, he had been there for a very long time, right? And he and, done really well. Why is that a bad thing? Yeah, but this year they were not going to do very well. You don't know that. No, I don't know that, but they they expected like this was going to be the drop off. They lose a lot of seniors. Okay, and obviously we'll preview them later. But um, anyway. here's the deal with Houston quarterback. I think this bodes well for my my power six. It, it may philosophy. It may, especially if they're willing to put up that kind of money, right? That's right. Uh, quarterback Derek King put up massive numbers before he tore his meniscus in his right knee. Uh, the majority of their school players are back. I mean, they were 
they were massive on offense. It's, they put up some major league numbers, but they do uh, lose Kendall Bryles, who is like the king of putting up. But you're not uh, worried about stats. that if you bring in Dana. Because uh, Dana's going to run his own off. This is yeah. the beauty of having Dana and not a guy like Major Applewhite. You don't really care who the OC is because the head coach is going to run the offense. Agree. This is Mike Leeds. This is this is I got my OC. I yeah. don't I don't need to worry about am I going to lose this guy to another coaching job? Whatever is he going to get promoted? I don't. I, I got it in the bag. It's yeah. okay. No, you're right. You're right. It's Saban as a DC. You, the defensive coordinator in Alabama could just roll yeah. over every year and nothing changes. Right. That's it, well. Now some well last year kind of changed a little bit. Oh, okay. uh, but might have had something to do with the offense. Now, the defense for Houston, number 127 total defense in 2018, was ravaged by injuries. Obviously, Ed Oliver missed a ton of time, but, it, I mean, everybody missed a ton of time. It felt like the new D.C. is, uh, let's see, Joe Cawthon. Don't, the, don't know a lot about it's from, Cawthon. Yeah, from, uh, from Arkansas State, known for his attacking style. Arkansas State been okay on defense. Not great. Obviously, they've got an attacking offense as well. Um, but his defense, like, they get after the quarterback – they they go after turnovers like that is that's their mo that's what they do. The non conference schedule ain't easy. No, uh, at Oklahoma, neutral against Washington State, which neutral. I mean they're playing in Houston, um, <laughs> and then just at the Texas Stadium. And then e- even their supposed buy games are easy games. Like he's, they're playing at North Texas in Mason Fine's senior year with Seth Luttrell back as coach. Like it ain't easy. Uh, I think they're going to be pretty good. I think they lose uh, some games early. Uh, I have got them eight and four this year. I've got them six and two in conference. Got them eight and four as well. Here, the, the one thing you talked about, King at the quarterback position, if he can come back healthy and 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 play great. I mean, he he has he has a, a projection to possibly be a three thousand one thousand guy. Yes. Yes. So long as he's healthy. Yes. That's amazing, though. That's, there are a lot oh, of yeah. quarterbacks that are going to. Come close to that. No, no, no. They, they won't come. They either run or they can throw. This cat can do both. Yes. Uh, I think he is very well suited to what Holgerson likes to do. I got him 8-4 and four as well, and it's only because their, their two non-conference games are well, that's, tough. Uh, here's, here's what I've got them losing. And I, don't, I don't know that they might not split those. I've got them losing at UCF. I've got them losing actually at Tulane early in the year. Uh, and then I've got them losing at Oklahoma and against Washington State. I got them winning the North Texas game. Uh, I got them beating Cincinnati. I got them beating Memphis. You know, I, I think I think they're going to get some big wins, but I think they got at least two conference losses, and I think they got at least two non-conference losses. I think I think this conference is going to cannibalize itself. Yes, I think it's going to be very hard for somebody to come out of here and go undefeated or whatever, like UCF has done the last couple of years. I just and I don't think that's a knock on the conference. I actually think it's a good thing with the conference. Yes, I agree. But people nationally are gonna they'll, they'll just make it seem like it's not that big a deal. That's thing. right. That, yeah. they're, they're, they're not very good. Um I love Houston. I think if Houston comes out and beats either Washington State or Oklahoma, it won't surprise me. Well at that point you can set up for possibly a run. A a big time run here. A big time run. Well, but even so. then, but you win one of those games, you still gotta beat. UCF, you still got to beat Memphis. Yeah, like Cincinnati, you, Memphis. This is not UCF, this is not going to you know. be easy, even though you got a big win against somebody but, but who's supposed you, to be bigger than you. But if you do get a big win, then you can start thinking about That's New right. Year Six. That's right. right. And so, and, and you got those. You know, Oklahoma and Washington State are you know two games in the first three weeks of the season. So, okay. uh, a lot going on there. Uh, all right, so I've got a mate and four. You got a mate and four. Got a mate and four. Let's move on. The Memphis Tigers. Those are Memphis Tigers. That's right. Hometown team. We are based in Memphis, if you did not know. Gary's employed by the University of Memphis. I certainly am. I certainly am. Now, that I am not biased in that way. I'm no. actually giving you what I think. Uh, went 8-6 and six last year, 5-3 and three in the conference. They won this division last year and were given UCF everything they wanted in the I first know. half. Lost, lost two games to, to UCF. Yeah. In the Back-to-back back seasons. Just ridiculous. Uh, returning starters, they got seven on offense, eight on defense, number 45 uh, nationally in experience, number five in the conference in experience. Head coach Mike Norvell, 26 and 14 in three years, has won the AAC West two straight years. That has never happened before. 
they lost both their offensive coordinator and their defensive coordinator and their special teams coach. They lost everybody. But, look, if it's one thing that Norvell is good at, he is good at hiring. He understands right. talent on that. Uh, new offensive coordinator Kevin Johns was the OC at Texas Tech last year. That's a big thing. I know. Quarterback Brady White is back along with wide receiver uh, Coxie and Williams. Tight end Magnifico. Running back Patrick Taylor is back. Uh, the offense is stacked. Yes, they lost Losing Henderson. Henderson. Tough. They, they lost Henderson, but. It'll be okay. Well, and they lost Tony Pollard as a kick returner. That's right. right? So they, they lost some playmakers, but they've got, as far as rankings, like recruiting <laughs> rankings go, there has never been a more talented Memphis Tigers football team. Correct. And that, that's a pretty big deal. New defensive coordinator, Adam Fuller, came from Marshall. They had the number 25 total defense in 2018. The D returns eight starters, uh, including linebacker Austin Hall, cornerback T.J. Carter. T.J. Carter looks like he's probably going to be about a second-round pick as a junior next year. Like, that's crazy to think about, right? Like, that's the kind of talent that you got here at Memphis. Uh, Losing those two guys, Pollard and Henderson, is going to hurt, but the team has a lot of depth, a lot of talent. They are favored in all 12 games, one of only six teams in the country that's favored in all 12 games. Uh... I've got them 11 and 1 this year. I've got them losing at Houston and and I've got them 11 and 1, 7 and 1 in conference and winning the division. We have a lot of the same records. That's, and we never talk about these beforehand. And we never so and we, and we say impressive. this a lot because it shocks us. I did not think you would go that way. Remember last year, I wanted yeah. to go 12 and 0 cuz I really liked this Memphis team. Yeah. I didn't. I wanted to go 12 and 0 this year. I didn't. I'm eleven and one. Well, I don't. Still, I have like, no idea where they're going to lose it. Look, twelve and zero is really hard. I know that. That's why. That's why I don't. I rarely am ever going to pick that. Yeah. I mean, even even Alabama Clemson. Like, I'm always the guy that says I think they're going to lose the game just because. Like, I look. It, here's it's just not the schedule: happen. Ole Miss early. Like, it, you're you're lucky you get them early, right? Because uh, they got a whole bunch of new dudes and some new offensive coordinators, yeah. defense coordinator, whatever. Ole Miss is brand new, so and it's at home. You got Southern at South Alabama, Navy at home on a Thursday, at Louisiana Monroe, at Temple, two in Temple, of course. Uh, that's still early October. They're still going to be trying to figure things out. Yeah, new coach. Tulane stuff. at Tulsa, SMU, and then you've got a bye week before uh, Houston. Now, the, the Navy game, of course, with that triple option, always gives Memphis fits. Memphis has a bye week the week before that. Yeah, so but that helps. Tul- Tulane beat the hell out of them last year. Uh, agreed, agreed. Uh, and and it they just could not stop the run at all. Now defense, Memphis. I has think that's going to change this year. Do you think? I, I think uh, Adam just, Fuller coming in as, as the defense coordinator. I'm just expecting them to be a run and shoot. We're going to outscore people and, by and fifty. They, they might be. And Navy's defense has been, bleh, yeah. right. So, Navy, but Tulane, the game that that well, Navy last year, like it was Navy a torrential year, downpour. Well, and yeah, it was. It, if you go back and look at the the S and P stats. Yeah. Like ninety seven percent of the time, Memphis wins that game. Yeah, it well, was it was ridiculous. it was it was played in a monsoon against a team that runs the ball as opposed to a team that throws the ball over. And the you field. lost by one point. And you lose by one. The team that worried me, the game that worried me that runs the triple option was Tulane because Tulane dominated them from the time the game started to the time the game ended. Yep, controlled every aspect of it. Oh yeah, and it's just one of those things where Memphis is su- far superior than Tulane. That should not have happened. Um, I, I just don't see it, it happening two years it, it, in a row. It snowballed on them. It's That's snowballed. right. Um, so, so they get the bye week before they go to Houston, yep. right? Which could end up helping them in the long run, right? Uh, however, Houston also gets a bye week <laughs> right before that. That's right. But then Memphis has to play at USF and then Cincinnati at home to close out. That's going to be a big game. Well, which That's one? The Houston, Houston game where yes. both of them have a bye week. I, somebody with national TV it's gonna pick, they're they're going to pick it needs up. Needs to make sure ESPN, that game is to where be, people can see that game nationally. Yeah. Now, Houston, they've got a much tougher road to hoe to get there to try to be undefeated. They'll yeah. have to go through Oklahoma and West, uh, uh, and uh, Washington, State. Washington State. Yeah, sorry. And 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 it's just going to be a much different feel than old, uh, old Miss, you know, Memphis trying to get through them. But if they could somehow, which I – not realistic. If they could both get go into that game with one loss. Oh, it'd be massive. Absolutely massive. And I think it'll still be big anyway. Uh, Holgerson against Mike Norvell, two explosive offenses because both, I mean, both of them got a ton of talent. Right? That's right. So, 
Uh, so yeah, we we both got them eleven and one. Eleven and one. You got I them winning the division. I love this team. Yes, okay. I love 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 this Memphis team. All right, let's move on. The Navy Midshipmen, three and ten last year. That's right. Two and six in the conference. Got three returning starters on offense, three on defense. It's Not probably, good. It's probably a good thing. Number, I think that's a good thing. It, it might be. Uh, number one ten in experience in the country. Number twelve in the conference. Ken Neomatalola. 87 and 58 in 11 years. Uh, look, his bunch traveled last year 26,496 miles, like between all their games. Yeah. That was second in the FBS behind only Hawaii. Hawaii runs this thing every year. Well, yeah, because every year. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's like. Well, and, and Hawaii always ends up playing 13 games because somebody in FBS always gets to add a 13th game because they're going to Hawaii. That's right. So. Um, so again, you know, Navy went to Hawaii last year. They don't have to worry about it this year. Uh, quarterback Malcolm Perry's back. His offense was totally ineffective last year. Uh, look, number one eleven in total offense, number ninety six in scoring offense. Obviously, they're always going to be ranked high as far as rushing offense. Correct. We're not going to worry about the passing numbers, but as far as total offense goes, number one eleven is pretty bad. Uh, new defensive coordinator Brian Newberry from Kennesaw State. He's installing a four-two-five scheme with three-four principles. He says, uh, and and I think just about anything would be better than last year. Yes, uh, they were number eighty-seven in total defense, which is okay. But a lot of that has to do with time of possession, right? Guys like uh, Army, Navy, Air Force, whatever. Their defensive numbers, as far as total defense, is always going to be up there. So. Look, they, they've got Central Florida, Cincinnati, and Temple rotating off the schedule, which is definitely going to help them uh, because they, they replace them with UConn, East Carolina, and South Florida. Correct. The schedule is much more conducive they, to finding Ws. They rotate three teams that I think are going to be eight wins or better off, yes. and they replace them with three teams that won't have five, six wins together? Well, South Florida. Okay, South so, Florida. Yeah, USF I, is on there. But UConn and East Carolina you, won't have five right. or six wins together. Together. Like, that's uh, – this This helps out a lot. I I think this team still needs to build up, you know, because they, they don't have a ton of experience. Experience works numbers, like, magically in in these types of offenses. I've got them at five and seven this year. Yeah. Well, hang on. They got an odd number of games. No, 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 they don't have 13 games this year. They're not playing the 13th game? No, no, because they don't, they don't play they Hawaii this year. So they've got uh, they got three buys. But oh, that's right. I've got them right. I've got it right. I've got it right. I'm sorry. So, yeah, yeah it's, uh, I've got them five and seven. Uh, beating Holy Cross, beating East Carolina, loss at Memphis, loss to Air Force, win at Tulsa, loss to South Florida, loss to Tulane, win at UConn, loss at Notre Dame, a win over SMU, loss at Houston, loss against Army. That's that sounds right. I've got them five and seven. Like also. and and they might could find another win and get to six and six maybe. And I think that would be a massive achievement. If if they get another win, it's going to be in a rivalry game against Army, where Army is far superior than them. But or against seen, Air Force because Air Force or, has yeah, to travel. Or Air all the Force. That's there. right. But because we've seen anything happen in these rivalry games. Yeah. But that's the only place where I don't think they can win. I don't think they will win. But I think they have a chance to win. It has yeah. to be a rivalry game. Or they get lucky they play one of these big teams like a Memphis or a Houston in a damn monsoon again. Yeah. Now, if that happens and you're running the triple option, this other team's running the run and shoot, and you can't throw the football in that. Yeah. It's just it's, over. It's impossible. And you can't tackle somebody who's made to run a triple option. Neither one of those defenses are good anyway. No, you're right. So I, I think that's their best chance to beat somebody. They need the, they need the weather to just kick in like happened to Memphis or they got to win one of those big robbery yeah. games. I got and, them 5 and, and 7. 6 and 6 is not out of the question. If they beat Army, I'd be happy for them just just to get more of the military academies and bowls. I think very highly of Army this I year. I, I don't know. This happen. is this is the year where I just think, yeah, that's just not realistic. Yeah. But we've already broken down Army. That's did you know that the military academies get to bring in like their recruiting day or whatever their signing day is like it just happened this week or last week whatever it was they brought in fifty seven guys like it's it's a lot different obviously oh, it's, it's a, a completely different game 
Um, Army brought in 76 guys. It's a and little... they've got all these dudes that are returning. It's oh, it's but crazy. it's but it's different. It's very different. Very I mean, very these different. These are these guys are training to be soldiers, not football players. All right, moving on. Southern Methodist SMU Mustangs five and seven last year, four and four in conference. This is the one team I didn't I didn't know what to do with. I was I felt good about everybody else. Yeah, I was I was confused as well. Uh, seven returning starters on offense, eight on defense. Uh, experience as far as nationally, number 62, number nine in the conference. Head coach Sonny Dykes enters year two after the transition to the air raid kind of struggled in year one. I didn't think it would because, you know, Chad Morris likes to throw the ball around too. It but, wasn't that different than what they did before, I didn't think. But it, but the scheming and, and whatnot I think actually was, uh, and, and maybe we just didn't know enough about it. Uh, but he and offensive coordinator Rhett Lashley, they are proven. They will, they will get the offense turned around. Like, period. Uh, Texas transfer quarterback Shane Bichelle takes over with a ton of returning skill, uh, uh, talent, experience. Uh, there are a lot of new faces on the offensive line, though. So that's uh, that's not good as far as this goes. You need a lot of guys that, that know how to pass block. Defense held five of six final teams to 31 points or lower. They returned five defensive linemen, five linebackers, and six DBs. They should improve from 90th in total defense. Uh, the home slate's reasonable. The toughest games are on the road. A bowl game is certainly within reach, and I've got them getting 2-1. I've got them going 6-6 six and six okay. this year. I've got them still 5-7. and seven. I don't know what to think about Sonny Dykes. And, and so I, I, I don't know that I disagree with what you were saying about how bringing the air raid in and making it a little more, like, it, it, I didn't think it should have been that complicated. And you thought, well, maybe it should have. One of the things that Cliff Kingsbury talks about one of the things that Mike Leach talks about is the air raid is is supposed to be a more simplified version of, of all these offenses, is you actually have the players doing less. You just throw the ball a lot. You yeah. spread the ball out a ton. But the complexity of what you're doing is supposed to be simpler so the receivers know more about what they're doing. The quarterback knows more about what he's doing. Where it is a little complicated is your blocking schemes. But it's still supposed to be a, a more simplified offense. Um, that's listening to Kingsbury and Leach talk a lot. Yes. So um, I'm guessing all air raids probably are not the same. Yeah, but at they're, some they're point, not the exact same. At some no. point in time, I think if, if you're moving to a new system and your guys aren't at the level of talent that you yeah. need them to be, just dumb it down. Make it more simple for them. And that, that might have been what happened last year, and I think the defense might have just been bad enough that – no, and you're right. You know. They, I do think that they struggle defensively. Like so I said, I think the schedule sets up well. I, like I, I did not know what to do with this team. I don't really, I don't have a feel for them, and I don't really have a feel for who I think Dykes is going to be as a coach yet. I have got so I've got them beating Arkansas State early. But they make a bowl game this year. I think that's that's really good. Oh, for that's him. progress. That's that's improving. Yeah. It's not just oh, we won more game, one more game than you lost. But like you got to a bowl game. That's, that's yeah. different. I got, them, I got them beating Arkansas State, beating North Texas, beating Texas State, beating Tulsa, beating East Carolina, beating Tulane, and then losing to everybody else. Yeah. And I think, I think that's reasonable. Okay. So, all right, let's move on from there. Let's, uh, we got to be quick with these to get in our 30-minute time frame. Oh, crap. Yeah, uh, let's roll. Tulane Green Wave. Willie uh, Fritz, you keep telling me he's changing I, this triple option I, offense. I love Willie Fritz. I think this is going to be a rough year. He, they went seven and six last year, five and three in the conference, uh, five returning starters on offense, eight on defense, number sixty-eight nationally as far as the experience goes, number ten in the conference. Fritz, sixteen and twenty-one in three years, hired offensive coordinator Will Hall to revamp the offense from uh, the re- uh, not strictly triple, but very, very. Uh, triple option principled. Uh, so they're going to move to more up-tempo spread option mixed with a triple, which is just weird. I, I think we're getting so complicated it makes me nervous. Yeah, grad transfer quarterback Justin McMillan from LSU. Uh, he took over midseason and went 5-1 and one as a starter. They returned plenty of proven skill talent, but only one starting offensive lineman. Uh, the schedule starts out rough. It's front-loaded, but there are enough spots to be able to reach a bowl game uh, defense was good against the run, number 46, but they were number 107 against the pass. They've got eight starters back, including the entire defensive line. Had 14 sacks in 2017, jumped up to 41 last year. Now, will they be able to keep that kind of momentum going? 
Like, I, oh, I no, think, I, I, think I, I think that's a lot to that's ask. That's different, yeah. So I've got them at four and eight this now, year. Now, four, 14's insanely low also. Yeah, 14's you, low. You play 12 games. If you can't up. get two in a game, we're having a problem. I've got them four and eight. Uh, Ooh, but look, they're they're non conference. Like I've got them three and five okay. in the conference. Uh, but this year they play at SMU, at Temple. They've got UCF on the schedule. They play at Navy. They play at Memphis, at Army. Uh, they play Houston at home. They play at Auburn. They play Florida International. Like it, it it's really difficult. You know, I, I just I couldn't find where I was going to give them wins because as far as talent goes, I think. Like, they're a, a step below the majority of the teams on this schedule. They are. They are. But but that's that's kind of the rule for almost every triple option team. Yeah. Okay. I, I have a lot of respect for Willie Fritz. I like him a lot. I think, I mean, I still got him going seven and five again. I, I, I could be, I could, I could completely miss. It's just a lot of respect for him and, and being in the tank with him. Now, I don't I think, I think I don't that this sets up the well for next year. to get too crazy. Yeah. Like you're good at the triple option and it's hard for teams to prepare for that. So just just run it. Just yeah. run it and win six, seven games a year. Cause you can win. Why do the Naval Academies run it? Because they don't get 350 pound offensive linemen. Yeah. They don't they, because you have to fit in a certain size and a certain box to be one of our military academies. Yeah. You run too much. Like it's just not it's just not realistic. So they know they don't have the dudes. They know they don't have the talent to beat teams. So they have to use this gimmick offense, and, and it controls clock. It keeps your defense off. Like, it changes the way the entire game is played. If you're at that disadvantage, yeah, which Tulane is, yep. then why would you go away from the one thing that gets you seven games in a bowl game every year? I mean, you you got a point. But now, the I negative it, is, well, is you lose the bowl game almost every year because when you give a team a month to prepare well, for the last triple year option, they didn't. like last year they they whooped up on uh, Louisiana. Oh yeah, but 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 it's just it's just Willie hard. Fritz is doing it to uh, to make himself more appealing for bigger jobs for bigger jobs. Because you're right, you're not going to get a power five. I fully believe now that Georgia Tech is away from it. Yeah, there won't be another power five team that, that ever it. goes back to it. Yeah, you're probably right because offensive schemes are just too complicated. And and kind of too fun to watch. Yeah, I mean, big points. Uh, four and eight for me. You've got them what seven five. All right, All right we'll let's roll. let's make this fast. Tulsa Golden Hurricanes three and nine last year, two and six in the conference. Returning starters six on offense, seven on defense. Number thirty four nationally as far as experience goes. That's number three in the AAC. Head coach Philip Montgomery. He went six and seven in year one. Jumped to ten and three in year two, but since has gone two and ten and then three and nine. This program should absolutely be better. Inconsistent quarterback play has been the problem for them. Uh, number 30 passing offense in 2016, and then number 110 in 2017, number 109 in 2018. Grad chance for quarterback Zach Smith from Baylor should be a welcome addition to help alleviate this problem. The passing defense was number eight in the country last year, giving up 174 yards a game, but that had a lot to do with the fact that they were the number 119 uh, rushing defense, giving up over 233 yards a game. Uh, they should be better with five of their front six returning in a 3-3-5 scheme. Uh, the team could show significant improvement as far as their stats go, but their record may not be any better. In fact, I've got it one game worse because I just don't see it. I two just and don't see where they're going to be. I've got them two and ten as well. Got them one and seven in the conference with a win at East Carolina at the end, bookended by a win at San Jose State. They could find a way to win a home game, but their home schedule is uh, Oklahoma State, Wyoming, Navy, Memphis, UCF, and Houston. Where? Where, where is it going to come from? And so I, you've got them 2-10. 2-10. Two and ten. A two and ten. I've got them 2-10 and ten as well. Tulsa, you should be better. I think Philip Montgomery got lucky in year two. I don't know what has happened since. Zach Smith could be a revelation, but I'm going to bank on him not being... You you won't win more than three or four games if you're one nineteen one fifteen in run defense. Yeah, because the other team's just gonna keep the ball, and you'll never touch it. No, you're right. All right, that's gonna wrap up the AAC West. 
Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.